Hi, this is Mohammad Irfan from Bowdoin College. In this video, I'd like to make a comparison among three of the most foundational network models. The first one is Ardo Shani random graph model. The second one is Watts Strogatz a small worlds model. And the third one is Barabasi Albert preferential attachment model. So here are the questions uh, I have in front of me. I would like to experiment with these three network models in NetLogo to answer the following three questions. Okay, so typically when we study these network models, uh, we uh, look at individual models, uh, we do some experimentation, but to get a better understanding of these models, it's always good to think critically about these models. And these questions, uh, these three questions are meant to uh, encourage that level of critical thinking. The first question is uh, for each model, how do the parameters make the model more conducive to the propagation of viruses, information, misinformation, etc. Why? Okay. So uh, this question asks you about uh, to think about the parameters of the model and how the how the, how the parameters impact uh, the propagation of viruses or misinformation in a network. Okay. So first of all, this question is not meant to get to an answer regarding uh, propagation of viruses or information or misinformation. It's meant to think critically about this network model, as I mentioned before. Uh, the second question is based on a comparison of the three models, which model is more conducive to, the ab uh, to these propagations and why? So this is a model to model comparison instead of looking into each model and varying the parameters of these models. Okay, so the third question we have is suppose that you have you want to minimize the propagation of misinformation. You have power over uh, the nodes to prevent their spreading of misinformation, but you can only target a few nodes, not all of them. For the three models, what would be your strategy to minimize the spread of misinformation? Okay, so once again, this question is man is not meant to get to a correct answer to this question. It's meant to uh, think critically about these models. And in fact, there's no way of getting to a correct answer uh, purely looking at the structural uh, network models. We also need the behavioral component on top of this structural model. So with that, I'll start with the ardor shani random graph models. And I'll show you how to think about the first question. Um, I'm going to uh, get to my browser and show you how to get to this Ardor Shani random graph model for NetLogo. So if you type in bit.ly slash Ardor dash Reni, it'll uh, download the uh, NetLogo file, dot and logo file, and you can save it on your computer, then open it on uh, NetLogo. So let me go to NetLogo, and I'll also uh, put the questions uh, below NetLogo, so you can take a look at the questions, okay? So I'm going to file and uh, I'm going to NetLogo, then file, recent files, and here I have the Ardor Shani NetLogo file. Initially, we have the number of nodes to be 100 and the edge probability, in other words, the probability that any pair of nodes in the network will be connected by an edge, that's by default, it's set to 0 0.015, we can change it. So this is the model that we'll be working with, with the edge probability. And if we click Ardor Shani, it'll generate the network, uh, 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 one random instance of the network. And then we can also uh, play with the layout. I'm just going to set the layout option open. So here are the edges that you can see. Uh, there are a lot of isolated nodes that you can see. So we can increase the edge probability, like 0.01, uh, let's go to 0.3 and redo Ardor Shani. Now you can see a more dense graph. If we increase the edge probability even further, you can see the graph becomes even uh, uh, denser. And so the question uh, that we asked is for each model, how do the parameters make the model more conducive to the propagation of viruses, information or misinformation, why? Okay, so here uh, uh, for Ardor Shani random graph models, we can see that if we increase the edge probability or the probability of linking any pair of nodes by an edge, if we increase that probability, the network becomes uh, denser, meaning that there are more edges, which is natural. So what would you say? Uh, 
which is more what kind of network is more conducive to uh, propagation of viruses information or misinformation a network that has less number of edges or a network that has more number of edges assuming that we have the same number of nodes I, I believe you already uh, you can uh, readily see the answer there so next uh, we'll go to the what's stroke or small world models and uh, there we'll uh, think about the same questions to get to the what's stroke or small I'm going to my uh, models library file models library and there we can go to networks and here you see a small worlds model we'll open this model and again uh, we can we have a we can control the number of nodes I'll go to number of nodes of 12 just to show you the initial structure so initially we have a really clustered network the clustering coefficient is 0 0.0 or 0.5 and the average path length is a little bit high compared to the number of nodes of 12 the average path length is around 2 okay so we also have the rewiring probability uh, 0.30 uh, initially it's set to 0 0.30 let's uh, go to 0.2 and we'll also increase the number of nodes uh, here let's go to um, 100 nodes okay we'll uh, go to 100 nodes and set up this uh, network here you don't see the clustering because uh, all of the nodes all, all 100 nodes have been put together in a very small space but uh, you can see the clustering coefficient is 0.5 and the average path length initially is 12 which is pretty big compared to a network size of 100 nodes okay now we can do rewiring with this probability of 0 0.20 means that in expectation uh, one fifth or 20 percent of the edges would be rewired uh, so let's do the rewiring or we can uh, uh, yeah let's do the rewiring here and you can see that the clustering coefficient has gone down from 0.5 to 0.32 and the average path length has also gone down to 4.466. So here, when we think about the model parameters and their impact on uh, propagation of viruses or information or misinformation, we can think of these two uh, criteria, clustering coefficient and average path length. Well, uh, if you have a high clustering coefficient, uh, it, it's similar to a lockdown situation. If you think about the coronavirus uh, pandemic, uh, people are locked down there uh, the clustering coefficients are high meaning that people have their own bubbles and they live within their bubbles so the clustering coefficient is high so that uh, that uh, uh, that's not conducive high clustering coefficient is not conducive to the propagation of virus right uh, then uh, if you lower the clustering coefficient then people are mixing with each other uh, 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 there are connections among different clusters and also uh, the average path length also have an impact on the propagation of viruses or misinformation if you have a, a high average path length that means that it takes more number of hops to get to one place to another uh, in other words the virus will have to propagate through uh, more number of hops to get to one individual to another get from one individual to another so if you decrease that average path length uh, so that becomes more conducive to the propagation of viruses so the picture that you see right now uh, if you do a lot of rewiring let's go to a rewiring probability of 0.5 uh, they are uh, nearly half of the edges would be rewired so let's set up the model once again and rewire all and now you can see the clustering coefficient almost disappeared like 0 0.084 and the average path length has also gone down uh, to 3.575 so what did you, what did you say less number of rewiring or more rewirings which is more conducive to the propagation of viruses you can think of like a lockdown situation compared to normal situation so the previous picture that you saw was kind of the lockdown situation the picture that you are seeing right now it's there is no lockdown the clustering coefficient is almost uh, close to zero pretty close to zero and the average path length is also pretty small so which one you think is more conducive to the propagation of viruses i think you got the answer right so uh, the, the third model that uh, we'll, i'll show you is the barabasi albert 
preferential attachment model. So here's the model. And this model has a, a parameter m, which says a newly born node will form that number of m number of edges with the pre-existing nodes. And the probability of linking to an uh, existing node is proportional to that existing node's degree. Okay, so that's the Barabasi Albert preferential attachment uh, network model. Unfortunately, a net, lo a net logo in the models library, they only allow for the m value equals to one. Okay, so if you set it up, you'll see uh, like there's just uh, these green edges are the newly formed uh, edge. So go once, another node comes comes in and forms a, a green edge with a with an existing node, and you can keep going, and you can also turn on this go uh, button, and it will keep. Uh, you can also do the. It will keep adding nodes one at a time. You can redo the layout. It doesn't do much. Um, so this is the scenario that's uh, playing out. Already you can see that there are some celebrities like this node with a very high degree is a celebrity node. Uh, so here uh, we don't really get to play with the model parameter M because of the limitation of uh, NetLogo's uh, built-in uh, preferential attachment model parameter of M equals one. However, you can think of uh, this uh, model parameter M and its impact from a theoretical uh, perspective. Like if you have m uh, equals two, then each in each newly born node will form two links with the existing nodes, right? With, with the existing nodes, right? So in that case, you'll see a dancer graph. So again, you can come back to the you can think of the same questions. Like what would you say uh, uh, would is more conducive to uh, viruses? A graph that's dancer or a graph that's sparser in the number of edges. Okay, so I, I think you got the answer there too. Okay, so I'll stop this uh, model right here. So the second question that uh, I asked is based on the comparison of these three models, which model is most conducive to the above propagation Y? So now if you think about the model to model comparison, what stands out is this preferential attachment model uh, it can model uh, celebrities in a network. Like right now, you can see this node is a celebrity. So preferential attachment models can uh, model celebrities in a network. Celebrities means they have a, a really high degree, and that's due to preferential attachment models uh, 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 capturing of the power law degree distribution. And that has a huge impact on the propagation of viruses, information, or misinformation, right? Because if the virus can get to that uh, celebrity node, then from there it can uh, reach a huge number of other nodes. Okay, and none of the other models can capture this celebrity aspect of uh, network models. So there you, can, you get a hint of how to think about this model to model comparison, right? And the third question is suppose that you want to minimize the propagation of misinformation. You have power over nodes to prevent their spreading of misinformation, but you can only target a few nodes, not all of them. For the three models, what, are, what would be your strategy to minimize the spread of misinformation? Again, as I've mentioned before, this is not meant to, this question is not meant to get to a correct answer to, to this question. It's meant to think about the models more critically. So again, uh, when we do the model to model comparison, we saw that preferential attachment model has this celebrity aspect. So for preferential attachment model, if we can target those celebrities and uh, inactivate those celebrities in terms of like a spreading of misinformation or a spreading of viruses, then we would like to, we can achieve our goal. And because there are only few, very few celebrity nodes, uh, we can targetably, uh, we can targetably uh, address those celebrity nodes uh, by in inactivating those celebrity nodes or convincing those celebrity nodes not to propagate misin misinformation or viruses. Uh, the picture is not that clear for the other two models, right? So are there any random graph models? There is no such celebrity nodes. And in fact, the structure is completely random, the network structure. What's the Stroger's uh, model, small world's model? There you see clustering and uh, a small uh, small walls effect, but you don't get to see celebrity effect. 
so what, how do you think about them? Uh, would you say that a degree, would you target the high degree nodes? Or is there other ways of thinking about those, uh, those uh, network models? So I would say that uh, if you think about the uh, high degree nodes, you can get something comparable to a preferential attachment model, the answer we got to the preferential attachment model, but the uh, answer is not that clear. And in fact, uh, as I've mentioned, it's not the goal to think of, uh, get to the correct answer. The goal is to think about the different model parameters and how they impact the propagation of viruses and uh, misinformation, information, uh, these things, okay? So with that, I'll end this video here. Uh, thank you for watching.